shikues të ndëruar, mirë mrama dhe mirë se vini në emisionin Jeta në Kosovë. Kur ne e krasojmë vetën me rajonin në Kosovë, shpesh nga duket vetja që jemi të fundit sa i përket reformave të ndryshme që shteti duhet të bëj për t'ju afruar integrimit në vendet evropiane. Në fakt, shumë prej vendeve të rajonit vazhdojnë t'i kenë sfidat e njashme si tonat dhe për këtë këtu sonte kam fëtuar për fasues të shushri civile nga rajoni si dhe nga bota. Kam për fasues të shushri civile nga Malizi, Macedonia, Serbia si dhe ato vendet cila tash po kalojnë në për krizat e njashme që kaluam ne për a 15 djetve në Kosovë si që janë Jemeni, kam përfasues të shëshri civile nga Jemeni dhe Bangladeshi, si dhe përfasues të shëshri civile nga Kosova. Me këta mësafer sonte të diskutojmë se cilat janë sfidat e një shëshri civile për të ndihmuar institucioneve për të bërë reformat e nevojshme. Qka janë përvojat për cilave mund të mësojmë? Qka janë momentit kur edhe shëshria civile, edhe misioni ndërkomtare kanë qenë të të bishme dhe qka janë ato momentit kund Të gjitha këto të diskutojme panelistët e mesë sonte të cilët janë. Aleksandr Dedoviç nga Alfa Center i Malit Zi. Mirë mrama. Rade Rajko Cevski nga Fakulteti i Siguris në Macedoni. Mirë mrama. Budeni. Marja Aristic nga Birn, Sërbia. Mirë mrama. Astrid Istrefi nga nga Safe for World, që u dheqë programet e Safe for World në Evropë dhe Azi Qendrore. Minë mama. Minë mama i fatë. Itisar Al-Adi, nga organizata ju qeveritare për vajzat reja në Jemen. Good evening. Thank you. Edhe Rita Rosalyn Costa, nga organizata ju qeveritare zhvillimore më e madhja në bot, që i shërben mëse me miliona njerës e quajtur brak në Bangladesh. Minë mama. Falimderi që keni ardhë, një panel interesant për me dalë për i guacës tonë pak Kosovare dhe me këqyrë qysh balafacion vendet tjera me sfidat e njashme si të Kosovës. Po fillojmë me ty astrit sepse je Kosovar i cili po punën për një organizat huj, zhvillimore apo për siguri të quajtur Safer World duke embolu gjithë Evropën edhe azin qëndrore, e ke punu edhe në Afganistan. Shumë po më interesën qka ka Kosova me mësu prej këtyre vendeve ku ti po punën edhe, a kemi ne diqka me i dhonë si përvoj këtyre vendeve në cilat janë njëjtë në fazë, post-transicionale edhe post-konfliktuose. A kemi diqka që muj me mësu që shpo e bojnë vende tjera ndryshe apo ma mirë se në? Shumë pytje interesante jetë edhe pytje që kërkonë do shta përgjigje. Në Ma të thellë, mirë po përmundohem të ofroj pak shembu i praktik nga përvoja jonë në vendet në cilat punojmë. Besoj që ka praktikat mira dhe të këqia, si që të eksut edhe ju, praktika që të mirat, po qenë të mira me siguri që të të kenë efektin afat gjatë, po edhe të këqia të mund të kenë efektin afat gjatë njëjtë, me gjitha ato mund të manifestohen format ndryshme. E para, kryesoria me doj është konteksti, është ndryshëm prej Kosove, prej Aziz Qëndrore, prej Kaukazit, për shambull, Afganistanit, është mjaft ndryshëm, mirë po qështje që i prekin qytetarët janë po thujset njëjta. Mungesa e logaritmenjes, mungesa e transparencës e institucioneve, mungesa e logaritmenjes edhe prej akterve ndërkomtarë, prej misioneve që kanë mandat, janë mandatu dhe në fakt janë fëtu nga vendet me ofru ndimën e tyne. Këto janë kryesorët, po pas taj është gjendja ekonomike, që i mundon njerëzit janë korupcioni, krimi organizum, që nuk jemi të vetëm si pjesë. Mirë, edhe ajo që është njashme, është që ndoshta njerëzit e njashëm që ka nërën Kosovë në të nëntën me na pështu dhe me na një mu, janë njerëzit e njashëm që quhen këtë cirkusi, cirnikët e quajnë cirkusi i organizatave ndërkomtare, kur vjenë me një venë, ata në relacion me populatën lokale, 
a janë njëjtë si në Kosovë dhe a institucionet vendore në për këto vende a i trajtoj njëjtë institucionet ndërkomtare që misionet ndërkomtare që e lansojnë vetën në emën të shpërndarjes i deve demokratike dhe krejt me qka vinë. Realisht, aty e edhe desha dalë, për shemull unë kam taku kolegë që kam përnu me mu këtu, në OSB, i kam taku në Tajikistan, ose i kam taku edhe në Kyrgyzstan. Ka edhe të tjerë që janë në Kaukaz, në Gjorgji, e kam taku edhe në Afganistan, po tu i se është një grupi ekspertve të cilët përnojnë vendet në ndryshme të botës, në kontekstet ndryshme, që mundohen me i sjellë përvojat, për shemull nga Kosova, atje ose anasiltas, sa për DNI, në kemi marë për voja dhe prej vendeve tjera. Edhe qka dalon? Dalon shumë mandati, dalon shumë qasja. Si e institucioneve ashtu edhe vendase, ashtu edhe emisioneve ndërkomtare. Mirë, mu më interesën qka bojnë ata ma mirë se na. A kemi dhe qka me mësu prej mënyrën qush i trajtojnë ata misionet ndërkëmtare? Pa tjetër që po, unë po ja për shembullin e Kyrgyzstanit për shembull. Misioni ose bes atje, mas një konflikti ndërëtnik në Kyrgyzstan, ka sjellë nevojen për një mision ndërkëmtarë, me gjitha te institucionet, qeveria e Kyrgyzstanit e ka saktu, e ka përsaktu në detaje mandatin që ose bes do të ketë në Kyrgyzstan. Edhe ka qenë një debat mjaftin zetë, në mes të OSBS, në mes të partnerve ndërkomtar edhe Kyrgyzstanit, se si mund duket. Prandaj, rezultatet që edhe prioritetet që qeveria e Kyrgyzstanit i ka përcaktu, naturisht që do të sjelë një rezultatet e pritshme për cilat ka mendu qeveria vetë. Mirë, ka lëzëma një shembol kër ne ja kemi huq me e bokët në Kosovë, me ndonjë një misën ndërkomtar? Edhe qka bojmë keshën këtë drejtim? Unë besoj që konteksti jonë është ndrysh, ne i kemi baftesës misioneve ndërkomtare që të vinë të andimojnë Kosovën, me gjitha te ne kemi dështu me i përsaktu vetë prioritetet, me qenë të angazhum në definimin e qartë misioneve ndërkomtare edhe me pas të, dhe me thonë, tregusit cilit kishin me ba nështë, të mund shme daljen e emisioneve ndërkomtare nga Kosova. E që shkemi përfundu mas ka zhviteve, ka shumë pare ka ndon këto organizata zhvillimore ndërkomtare, e ka që pak thjesht në teren, ka që pak sukses edhe zhvillim ka. Që shkemi përfundu që të mas 15 vjetëve? Ka me siguri shumë faktorë që kanë diku që gjendjat mos në ndryshoj në edhe të prodoj ato efektet e duara që njerëzit i kanë pritë, se pritë jetë kanë qenë shumë të ndoja, dërso edhe problemet, edhe vargu i probleme ka qenë të përni madhë, ndërko që fushat nuk kanë qenë mjetë përsaktume, ka pas një përzirjet kompetencave shumë të madhe. A vazhdo në kjo me qenë sot? Hajde, më fillim mas luftës arsytojt dësi. Tash? Mas 15 vjetëve, apo di me i saktu prioritetet? Edhe sot besoj që nuk jemi në nivellin e duen për saktimin e prioriteteve. Një është ajo që mas e është edhe kryesorja, po tjetëra është edhe maturia politike. Këtu është dëshmu që nuk ka sa duhet maturi politike. Këtu prioritetet ndoshta janë përcaktu, janë rishiku edhe janë thjesht janë shty më shumë nga partnerët në të këmëtarë. Në fundit të du më shku të tjertë, po apo shkon të për i shetë men tjera shteteve që shtu qush në kanë shqit men të hundë se 15 vjetë neve, apo je ma, pëse je për i Kosovës dhe dinë shqë, sa agendat në kanë shtyt hujt, a je shuma i matën që ka sa menjë shetë shteteve tjera, kur shkon me i kaldzu që shme zhvillu venin. Unë besoj që kam su shumë nga përvoja prej misioneve ndërkomtare, këtu edhe bashkëpunimit me ta, edhe besoj shumë, edhe me këmgullje, dhe më thonë me përkushtim të madhë, mundohem që gabimet që ndërkomtare të kanë bon Kosovë të mos i përsëris në vendet tjera. Pra ndaj nuk shes men, po mundohem me ju ofru në dimen me ekspertizen që ne kemi si organizat, edhe unë si person individualisht, në ato fusha në cilat kemi përvoj, kemi ekspertiz. Po përqenë një shqiptar me i shqit men shteteve tjera, se gjithë mund tjertë në ashesi neve, po më spari, së dyti, Mr. Dedovic, I'm starting second with you, because, unfortunately, the closest 
what reputation that we have. Um, we might have uh, not so much in common, not, maybe not the, the language, but what we have in common is that both Montenegro and Kosovo, unfortunately in European circles, are, uh, have a reputation for high level of corruption. So I'm very curious uh, that uh, in, in how come you are making progress in EU integration despite your reputation, despite the fact that a lot of your top politicians are being uh, accused of corruption, but you're still making headway. How can we do that? It looks like that Montenegro is going forward to the EU integration. It seems that... Uh, Isn't it to, true? Yeah. Uh, it is not the first way that we, uh, citizens would like to have it. It is not the first as the people from the region see that through the media. Uh, it seems that Montenegro is strongly dedicated in foreign policy to the membership to NATO as well to EU. But uh, the rule of law, justice and fight against corruption and crime are the main and the most important obstacles or the most important criteria why our NATO partners and EU partners are still standing with Montenegro on some kind of pending for And your organization invitation. is involved in a daily basis into groups helping the institutions to establish uh, working groups that help uh, legislation uh, on anti-corruption, right? Yes, of course. Uh, it, it was uh, started to be one year ago. It was not a result as a good political will of the political elites in Montenegro. It was some kind of pressure or advice from the international community, especially uh, official Brussels and official Washington. The Montenegro government started to including uh, NGO and civil society representatives mm -hmm. uh, in some kind of the development of the law, development of the strategy, how to fight against the corruption. Uh, yes, it will be the great challenge. I cannot say it's a problem, but we will see how it's going on for the beginning. It looks like very good, very formal, mm -hmm. but it's very um, hard and difficult to fight and to find the good results mm -hmm. about the fight against corruption. Because the official Washington, official Brussels need to see the results. That someone at the end must be uh, processed, it must be arrested and must be sent to the jail. So is there any tension or, or like a moral dilemma for the civil society to sit in the same table to, to, to make strategies, anti-corruption strategies, with people who are sort of, um, sort of leading that corruption? Uh, sorry, I will correct you. Yeah. Uh, the corruption is everywhere in Montenegro society. Business uh, sector, uh, public uh, administration and civil society. Same and sometimes they are networking. Uh -huh. but. I said, I repeat it, 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 is, uh, it will be a good and great challenge to fight against mm -hmm. corruption with the people who are almost, let's say, some kind of the main players mm -hmm. in the corruption game in Montenegro. But so how is it like if the main players that were causing corruption and trying to stop it? it what is, is just, it like? It is the start, the game is already begun and we will see how it will be played. But uh, now we are uh, sitting uh, together uh, around the table and we are putting on the table the playing cards and we start to play. Now it's a very tough, difficult, we are going step by step, uh, especially in the area of public advocacy, to directly be involved in the development of some new law. But at the moment, the, the big uh, results, unfortunately, is that uh, almost eight months we have no the main prosecutor in Montenegro because Montenegro parliament uh, rejected mm -hmm. to vote him or her. Mm -hmm. And it will be, uh, well, maybe after the six months, we will open a new open call for new prosecutor. And uh, That's what I wanted to ask you. So is there any chance to see in Montenegro a kind of high level arrest we saw in Croatia? Uh, as, a, as a free citizen of Montenegro, yeah. I am belonging to the group who are expecting that time in Montenegro. Mm -hmm. uh, could be that uh, this summer How will long, be very interesting. What's your estimate? How uh, long will it take Montenegro to I mean, arrest uh, some people? Some top uh, corruption people? I, I think from my point of view, the next NATO summit in Wales uh, will be the, let's say, the deadline for the at least two examples. During this summit... So, so Montenegro will want to impress the world before the NATO summit? Is that Must what be. Well, yes. Yeah? It will be <laughs> one more. Yeah, it will be one more uh, step how to get invitation from the Wells to NATO membership, uh -huh. but NATO partners, Washington and others need to see results. Yeah. Need to see results. There are no more talking than just playing, acting, uh, fight against uh, corruption. Uh, Maria, I will go to you first because, um, uh, because 
actually in Serbia recently we've seen some anti-corruption arrests. Um, Šaric was arrested, a top uh, drug trafficker. Uh, is that to impress Europe as well? Uh, that is to impress Europe, but also to impress citizens of Serbia, yeah. uh, who basically voted for this new government uh, on uh, the promises they made during the election campaign, that uh, their main focus is actually fight against corruption. So yes, Šarić in that case is a step forward, but uh, what we expect is actually that Šarić to reveal his political connections mm -hmm. and how he managed actually to escape such a long period of time. There are speculations uh, that he was uh, direct, directly linked uh, with some people from the cabinet of our former prime minister, uh, Ivica Dacic. But not, Dacic. not this, this uh, cabinet today? Uh, not, I mean, we are still waiting for the cabinet. People yeah. say that it will be uh, done uh, uh, today. Mm -hmm. So uh, we expect now uh, Alexander Vucic to be a prime minister and Dacic uh, holding his position as a minister of foreign affairs. So uh, at least th th those were mm -hmm. speculations that this will lead to a further uh, investigation into the political elite who actually helped Šarić to be where he, he was. Uh, apart from this, um, from, from the perspective here, you have been instrumental to help the Kosovar public hear a very important story. For three years, you followed the trial of Čušk and Ljubenic. Uh, and uh, when you followed that trial, you went deeper into the story by, uh, by actually getting witnesses in that war crimes trial to open up to you almost uh, and open your heart so much that then that story came to Kosovo. A paramilitary who, who on our TV, uh, through you, came to our television to tell the audience what happened. Uh, does it look like Serbia is actually seriously doing war crimes? Well, it looks like, really, from, uh, from the outside. Uh, but basically, all the people who were prosecuted uh, so far, not just for war crimes in Kosovo, but also for Bosnia and Croatia, were direct perpetrators. Uh, this is what was noted also by the EU. In the latest uh, EU progress report, it was said that Serbia completely failed in prosecuting high officials, meaning that so far only three people who were commanders uh, were uh, on trial. One was acquitted. Uh, one is on retrial and one we are waiting to see what, what will happen. So you so are saying it's quite cosmetic? Exactly. Uh, I don't know whether it is the strategy of the prosecution, whether this was uh, a state decision, but uh, the cases that are prosecuted mm -hmm. so far uh, are basically showing that only those who shot people basically mm -hmm. are the ones uh, to be blamed. People not who, the top boss. Exactly. People who order the crimes uh, are not even invited to testify, uh -huh. which I think is a big problem for the credibility of the prosecution. Mm -hmm. uh, it is okay that they say that they don't have evidences that someone ordered something, but at least he can be called uh, as a witness if someone is presenting him as a commander of the unit or, or something. You've been following trials. Is it true there's no uh, proof, there's no proof and evidence that uh, top-level people were involved into giving orders like that? Well, I would say that there are evidences and a lot of people also who are following the trial, mainly from civil society, because we are only involved mm -hmm. uh, in this process, are saying that there are evidences. There is um, big documentation from the Hague Tribunal. There are verdicts for Kosovo in the Hague for the top officials. There are many documents there who can uh, provide our prosecution basically uh, further documentation to prosecute those who ordered the crime. But I say, I think that this is the strategy of the either prosecution or the state, don't know who, who decided that, basically to go just for a direct perpetrators. I mm -hmm. hope this will change, but so far, 10 years after, we, we still didn't see it coming. Mm. So uh, it's not as serious as it yes. looks from outside yes. a little bit. Okay, um, going from Serbia to Macedonia, uh, Mr. Rakocevski, you are a security expert, um, but so from the security side, security expert who works with civil society, um, I'm interested to know whether uh, how do inter-ethnic relations between Macedonians and Albanians affect mm. the Macedonians' uh, integration to the EU? It does, do the reforms depend from Albanians and Macedonians being nice to each other? Uh, 
or they don't have to be nice <laughs> and you'll still get into the EU? Mainly, mainly uh, because we are speaking about the security issue, but uh, always the security issues are related to, to, the, to the political condition in the, in the country. So in this kind of situation, as uh, uh, out of other, other, uh, other problems from which suffer most of the countries in the region, we have three special problems. It, this is the, as you mentioned, it is the first problem are the interethnic relations, the security implications from the name dispute, and the third one is the political instability. So we have the tri triangle of the, of the problems, and it, in each of these problems participate the, 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 Macedonia, uh, the, the, the political parties of the Macedonian and, uh, and Albanians, not only in the government, because I'm speaking about the accountability, that is uh, something uh, very important, uh, especially in the decision-making ma uh, uh, process. So uh, when we speak about the, 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 the relation uh, between the, the Macedonians and the Albanians, okay, there is a political will from, for some of the, some of the, uh, some of the strategic issues of, of, of Macedonia. Uh, we can speak about the EU accession and we can speak about the, 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 to, to, the, the, the partnership with, with NATO and to, to, be, to be a member of, of NATO. In uh, each of the party program, we have uh, these two issues as a, as a main uh, topics in the in the agenda of, of Macedonian and Albanian of the parties of Macedonian and Albanians in, in Macedonia. So, is the EU reform at all uh, practically helping Macedonians uh, and, and Albanians being in any way uh, you know equal uh, and and more happy with each other, or uh, is the tension just continuing? with or without uh, EU integration <laughs> process? EU, EU, uh, is there is, pressure from EU? Uh, pressure from EU, uh, pressure from the third party, I will say, because uh -huh. if, if it is not EU, then it is US. US, <laughs> yes. Because we have US and uh, Turkey as, as the strategic partners. Uh, it is very important, these processes, because uh, uh, I'm speaking from the, from the security uh -huh. uh, point of view. So, so do you see security uh, problems, risks, political, in this or political not? instability uh, is directly directly reflects on the on the security sector. Mm. It uh, it doesn't help to build the the, the identity of the security sector. So we have the division in the security sector. We have the political ethnical divisions. So. If, they, if the political party agree uh, regarding the, the main uh, issues in Macedonia, mm -hmm. there will be no divisions in the security sector that will help to build the identity. That is something which was already made during the, the last 10, 12 years after the armed conflict. So political will, okay, on paper it should be because EU is pushing, but uh, Political will in practice, uh, as, as I said, there is a lack of accountability to the political partners mm. in the government. Uh, it is not a question of this government or the previous. It is generally we have the continuation of the processes uh, last uh, 20 years. So they didn't, they didn't agree uh, regarding the, the, the major security interest of Macedonia. Mm -hmm. um, Tjetër i Shqiptarve, astrit në këtë konfliktin, apo së është konflikt potencion etnik në, në Macedoni, a, in, a jemi të po që integrimi evropian për i një mënd që ti tensioni edhe uh, kanë relacione matë mira për shkak se dojnë me hi në, uh, në BE, bashkim evropian, apo jo, Shqiptarët edhe Macedon, që ka po ndodhë në vërtetën, teren, pasi punoni e mbikësuni edhe atë teren. Bo, është shumë problemi i, i thell, uh, gjeta dhe manifestohet pikrisht ashtu si gjithu në politikant. Mm. Uh, në një pik nuk isha me dasht më pajtu me, me kolegën mm. tim Rajkovqevski, pasi që uh, pajtimi politik mm -hmm. nuk në nënkupton edhe pajtim në mes të grupeve të armicume, uh, të cilat me ndojnë për hakmarje, të cilat me ndojnë për... Uh, këthimin e, e borgjit, nëse, nëse mund të them ashtu, 
се кркуваат ни па и тем дърмият кутюне групеве, дърмият те джитта штреса в шоши, спаши бизнесет еде шошин цивиле. Не е форт мир едим, че нато нжоре, нато жвидиме политикен Македонии, че оста еден жвидимет политикен тур мест Косово се да сервис, шошия цивиле нук ка ни роли. Nuk në digjohet, nuk në digjohet zonën qytetarve. Në thonë marveshjet politike, për hirt integrimin në bashkimin evropian. E kanë kuptimin e përmbushjes një kriteri, po për cilën asë një prej politikanve ose qeverive nuk beson edhe nuk me ndon, nuk punon vazhdimisht për të ndryshu gjendjen. Në thonë, friga është që pamvarsisht integrimit evropian, pamvarsisht kriterive, në substancë, nuk në dryshon asë gjo. Armisit do të rritë në ma shumë. E prej, a mund është me më dhonë shemboj prej botës realin ma që dhe një sëtë ku dukët që nuk po në dryshon? A ke që si shemboj? Shemboj ka mjaftë, shemboj janë edhe simbolizmat, shemboj janë edhe retorika, politike, etnonacionaliste, jo vetëm ma që dhe një, po edhe në Kosovë, edhe në Sërbi, edhe në rajon. Në tonë ato janë dukshme, janë theksume. Ke artiku i përshemull që prej ish krye ministrit Macedonis, nuk është i vetmi, po e marrë si shemull këtu me ilustru. Qka thot, aj? I cili thot për 15 djet, 20 djet, Macedonia nuk do tjetë shqiptare. Nuk do tjetë Macedone? Nuk do tjetë Macedone, kërkoj falje. Për shkak natalitetit manë shqiptarve? Për shkak të shtimit të numërit shqiptarve dhe ullis të numërit të Macedonve. Unë besoj që njifet në politikë Zoti Georgievski për pikpamje pak ma radikale, ato mund të reflektojnë mirë në një pjesë populatës, po në base mund të kënë refleksion shumë të ndryshëm në në mbarë shëqërin Macedonase, edhe jo vetëm aty, po edhe jashtë kufirit. Për shemull, gjitho të tension që egziston në veri, nuk është i zolun veri, po i kalon kufit, manifestohet edhe në jug të Serbijës, manifestohet edhe në Macedoni. Veç apo shihet që nëse është që këj nasionalizm tension, etnek, apo e nalë venin me u zhvillu ekonomikisht, apo e në të lidhuna këto dyjat, apo, për shembul, prap se prap, edhe ne kemi tension shqiptar sërb, si Macedonia shqiptar Macedon, ndo shta jo të njëti nivel, po ndryshe, ndryshe, me gjithat e, pse Macedonia pomrin me u zhvillu ekonomikisht, mos me stagnu, e nas pomrim. Ndo shta të dyja s'ka në të lidhje më njëna me tjetërin? Nuk besoj që ka lidhje në kuptimin e zhvillimin ekonomik për shka këtë periudhës kohës luftës, damet matë më dhaj e ka pas Kosova, Macedonia nuk ka pas dame në kuptimin e infrastrukturës e industrijës, a jo ka qenë egzistu se ka vazhdu, me gjitha te shumë procese që ka ndodhë në Kosovë ka qenë një transparente, ka qenë të pa kuptushme edhe për qytetarin, edhe për njerëzit, besoj edhe për politikanët, nuk kanë qenë, nuk janë kuptu drejt edhe kanë produ rezultate shumë negative në vend se me produ rezultate pozitive. Do you have something to add to this? I don't know, maybe, maybe as, as, as you said, natality is not a problem. Natality of Albanians, now, we, we, unfortunately, we, we have withdrawn census last year. So there is a, one hypothesis now, what, uh, what will, we, there is a, some kind of polemic uh, around mm -hmm. the, 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 pre, the, the first results of the, of the census. What will happen when, if the Albanians are less than 20%? when in situation most of the rights of the Albanians are guaranteed if they are 20% 20 of the population. The second one is uh, EU accession. EU is forcing the civilian society, not uh, multi-ethnic society. So it is, we, we, uh, we, we were lost in the trans, uh, translation when, when, we, when we start the reforms. But is it true that Mr. Georgievski, former uh, Prime Minister of Macedonia, has declared that um, that we will be at risk from Albanians in 15 years' time if they keep uh, giving birth as much as possible. No, uh, there is uh, emancipation there yeah. practically everywhere from is the government. Is it a, a serious risk that for a normal Macedonian, um, a, a normal citizen, 
a common citizen of Macedonia. Do uh, they worry about the country fear. being run over by Albanians? Uh, not from the uh, the, the increase, uh, as you said, from the natality. But uh, there is a fear from the demands. From when mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I will also give a comment from the security point of view. Uh, what does it mean? A demand for fear for demand for what? Demand, demand for, for the for the extra rights. <laughs> Extra rights. Uh, extra rights. Uh, I'm speaking about rights which are not part of the Okrit agreement. Mm -hmm. So uh, every constitution of the new government uh, comes with uh, demands from the Albanian party for extra rights for the, for the Albanians. But there is no, um, while when you ask Albanians, there's a perception about the like, social inequality, that Albanians keep being the, the Macedonians' taxi drivers uh, rather, than, um, rather than civil servants. Is that realistic fear? From Albanian side, there's fear that Macedonians are trying to delay integration so that as many uh, Albanian, unqualified Albanians can leave Macedonia. Now, you have an opp opportunity, Macedonian passport holders, to go to Europe without visas, and that Macedonians are interested that as many Albanians leave as possible. There are many Macedonians leave Macedonia. As well. There is some official uh, numbers mm -hmm. of about uh, 350,000 people who leave Macedonia in the last uh, uh, year since the, the last census from 2002. Its uh, demographic changes are so very... So the fear about uh, the, the, the unequality between Macedonians and Albanians is not true? Uh, is not uh, legitimate? It depends from which area. Mostly uh, from the area where there is no economic uh, growth, there, there is no economic development. Uh, like everywhere, there are people who, who go away. And they go away forever, not for uh, one, two years. Two years. But in terms of professions and what people do in Macedonia, uh, is it, is it true to, is it a um, prejudices that Albanians actually are just doing the, 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 the tough work uh, and Macedonians are being, having good jobs? Is that a, a wrong perception? What good job? Minister in the government? It's a tough job. <laughs> oh, apart from minister, that's a political deal. A, that's a yes, political deal. In the Other normal people, I mean, normal, normal citizens. Normal people, uh, Macedonians have here, according to the to the criteria for entering in the public administration. Mm -hmm. So the criteria, th this kind of positive discrimination makes fear to the Macedonians. Actually, there's even, today you have to speak for Macedonian. It's a plus, uh, actively a plus if you speak Albanian to get it job, right? Uh, yes, yes, yes. And there uh, are even Macedonians uh, learning Albanian, as far, there are as, far as I've heard. Yes, there are Macedonians. Mostly, mm -hmm. mostly here with Kosovo. <laughs> Kosovo is our largest partner. So most of the enterprises, the companies who, who work with Kosovo, Albanian, are necessary to, to know Albanian. Mm -hmm. uh, it's in the regional market, our connection with Albania. But as I said, the mostly according to... Interesting, because what we see from... The reason why I'm pushing it is what we see mm -hmm. from outside is all these new uh, glorifying new monuments, uh, building up the new Macedonian identity, mm -hmm. which is away from Albanian identity. Um, is, is that only a facade or is it really what's happening behind Macedonia is some new... Uh, identity push for uh, a new uh, Macedonia, Macedonians? It's a political agenda from only from one party, so I can speak about it. It's the uh, biggest, it, it, the biggest the party, party yes, yes. Who it, has it everything? Is, they, they, have, they, they, are, they, are, they are in the government, so they are normally elected and on, the, on the elections. So Is that supported by majority of public opinion? Uh, we have the elections now on Saturday, so we will see. We will see. We will <laughs> it's very see. Free. The, the uh, answer will come very, very soon. <laughs> I apologize for not including you earlier, but um, clearly we're very Balkan centered. Uh, but I want to know, Rita, to, to start from you. Um, Brak, uh, I was impressed about, uh, when I looked at what, what Brak does. Um, and the best review you got from, was from The Economist, uh, saying that you are the fastest growing uh, non-governmental NGO in the world with the most business-like practical approach. So what is your method that uh, you, you are so successful uh, serving the people, even as an NGO, where you actually don't need to be an institution to be that successful? 
Because you know the BRAC is the development organization mm -hmm. and BRAC is uh, working for empowering the people, poor people especially because BRAC yeah. believes that if you empower the people, then people can raise their voice, they can be organized and they can realize their potentials mm -hmm. and they can bring positive changes in their lives. So we go for comprehensive approaches. So we do uh, services in different areas like education, health, then microfinance, then uh, uh, and also in different uh, areas of development. Mm -hmm. So that is why we are going for the comprehensive approach. And we are providing, we are working uh, with special with the women and our the development uh, partners and uh, the uh, what we call the beneficiaries we call. And do you have support from institutions or do you have ig ignoring? When, uh, when was that, that point when uh, it, it took the institutions to notice you and to, to no, no. involve uh, sometimes you? Sometimes we are uh, seeking uh, support from the institutions. Uh, because are you ever critical to the institutions at the same time as getting the support? Uh, yes, sometimes <laughs> they are getting critical. Huh? Mm -hmm. But uh, what we have, uh, we are providing the different platforms to the poor women. Huh? Mm -hmm. So through these different platforms, they can, uh, they, uh, they can realize their potentials huh? and they can raise their voices. Huh? They can uh, become aware of different uh, issues which related to, to their daily lives. So, and also we link them, uh, these, uh, we call them uh, our partners, development partners. So, uh, uh, because we uh, were working for them, we want them to make them more enable. So mm -hmm. that's why we are giving them uh, different type of opportunities, like we link them with the different development of programs, with different development uh, organizations, with mm -hmm. the, uh, and also micro-enterprise development. So basically you don't work in the field of <clears throat> accountability, transparency, yes, or uh, legal I, reform, or do you? <laughs> yes. You do? Uh, at the local level, we are mm -hmm. basically working with the community people at the mm -hmm. very grassroots level. At the local level, the local elected members, we are working with them because uh, the local community people, they are going to these elected members for mm -hmm. their any kind of needs. So we wanted to make them more accountable, these type of uh, people, the local elected members. So we organize them and make in front of, uh, we organize discussion and uh, in front of this discussion, these people, huh, they are uh, become more responsible and they are become accountable because this is the way mm -hmm. huh, we are, uh, trying to make the local elected members and the local administration more responsible and more accountable to the people. Great, thanks very much. Um, and great to have you here from so far away, from Bangladesh. And uh, Ms. Aladi, you've come from Yemen. Um, do you feel, after being for one day at the conference and hearing lots of Balkan problems here, is there anything similar what you've heard yesterday in the conference that your country is going through, Yemen, uh, in the Middle East right now? Um, are there any similar challenges? And mostly I'm interested in uh, what is the international community doing right for you? And where is it causing more harm than good? Where is it causing good and where is it causing harm? To answer this question, I should mention that uh, in 2011, uh, Yemen has youth revolution, mm -hmm. uh, which is to uh, to get out from the previous president. Mm -hmm. And uh, in this time, in that time, we had a lot of conflicts and victims. And uh, the international uh, organization and the role of international organization really it helped us to, uh, to rid of the civil uh, war and uh, from the Gulf Initiative and also from the, uh, the Security Council to help us really to, to be in a stable time to not have the civil war. Uh, and also, um, so we are in Yemen in transitional period, which is now um, we will have the uh, presidency um, elections. And also, uh, I want to mention that the uh, the, the, the transitional period has the the national dialogue, which uh, collect the different groups, the different parties in one place. They discuss the the situation in Yemen and they come up with the uh, outcomes. It, it is really it's great outcomes. But now we are asking to implement this. Uh, 
uh, outcomes. Uh, so now Yemen uh, face a lot of problems. Uh, actually, um, the conflict, the armed conflict, and the, there is a conflict between tribes and uh, some groups like Houthi group. Uh, there is lack of security, actually. So the international organization and the role of the international organization, it helped us really to mm -hmm. uh, to face this problem by the uh, the um, the Security Council has the the resolution to banish who who stop the transitional period this time. Uh, this is really, it helped us to find who, who will stop the transitional period and who, who want to, uh, to Yemen to be in the, uh, in the civil war. So because the, uh, the contribution of the international uh, organization um, really, uh, like I said, it helped us. And also it helped us to fight the Qaeda, which is, uh, it's, uh, oh, it's, Qaeda. Yeah, it's yeah. really, it's really a um, big problem in Yemen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, they help us, but there are some victims from the civilian people. Something important that I think I relate to uh, coming from Kosovo is that what you said yesterday, international community, uh, by bringing the, the needs Jones. for quota on women, yeah. Um, it has helped women empowerment. That is one good thing, I think, in Kosovo that has been done, we got to give credit to, that only because of internationals, we have 30% of women in the parliament. Because when it is left to our uh, politicians, no women candidates, yes. very few women candidates, 1% of women candidates were uh, put out for mayoral elections. And when internationals have imposed it, we have to fulfill this quota. How is this... Um, uh, working in, in Yemen and, and India, uh, patriarchal societies as well. Yeah. How is it working out? Yeah. It, are, are your politicians listening to the internationals when it comes to women's rights? Uh, actually, uh, there is outcomes from the, from the national dialogue, which is women can uh, represent at least 30% per, from the uh, different authorities. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is the good, really, it's a good chance for women to put her rights to, uh, to Bush. And, and actually, and, and are the women in Yemen getting um, backfired by saying, oh, just because of these internationals, you've, you've got arrogant? Yeah, These are the comments uh, we used to get in Kosovo. Uh, actually, no. We, now we are, we are so optimistic that women yeah. has uh, a good position in the political uh, uh -huh. uh, place and position. So and nobody is so, limiting that. Uh, actually, there is there is some uh, who so, are against mm -hmm. this because the mentality, mm -hmm. because also the tradition. Are they minority or are they majority? That's the important thing. Uh, actually, I can't say majority, but we should enforce us or yeah, force yeah. our rights. Yeah. This is our rights because the, like I said, the mentality of our people, the mm -hmm. there are the traditions that they have from the, from the old. I mean, so we. This is, I think, this is a goal and gold uh, time mm -hmm. for women. Okay, great things you're saying about internationals. You're clearly in the beginning, very enthusiastic, but come on, be critical, <laughs> be free. Yeah. Uh, tell me, what, what is, is there anything uh, harm, harmful that they are doing I think at that, this point? Yeah, in my opinion, there is positive role and there is, of course, negative. Like I said. Is there? Yeah. I'm, uh, for sure. I, I don't want for to sure, make yeah. it up. I don't want you to make it up, but uh, is there? For sure, yeah. There are some countries who now uh, make... Uh, uh, they play a bad role in Yemen and they make conflict. But on the other hand, like I said, there is a positive role for the international community, which is the best or the biggest things that they save us from the civil war. Mm. Yeah. On the other hand, like you said, I'm, I'm optimistic. I should be mm -hmm. optimistic. On the other hand, like I said, there is uh, a lot of mistakes and are, uh, there are many, um, what can I say, from different countries who they don't want to uh, Yemen to be stable and to be insecure. What about the democratic world that we speak of? The EU and the US, are they doing everything right for Yemen? 
according to the citizens, the voice of the people, are they doing everything right? I can say that uh, most of the international community and organization mm -hmm. really, they help us and they get supporting the NGOs especially to, mm -hmm. to uh, play a good role in our community. For mm -hmm. example, they help us to, uh, to raise awareness of the community about the mm -hmm. in dialogue, in uh, security, in human rights, and they also they help us to mm -hmm. to uh, to take the I can say to be a voice of people to. Mm -hmm reach them uh, their voice to the government and uh, like I said now we are in the uh, to write the Constitution this is a mm -hmm. uh, this is a good point uh, are you gonna write it or are international is gonna write it for you uh, no 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 are you gonna it will have be nationally yeah, nationally course. are yeah, you gonna have a flag imposed no, to no, you actually now are international is gonna draw it out for you <laughs> this is what they did for us and a hymn no. we couldn't decide they did the music for us no no words no. so we don't get any Albanian no, no, or Serbian. Actually, the, now we we have a committee and they established a committee now for to write the constitution from the nation uh, people from them um, our country not from yeah. our side i think the outcomes of the national dialogue and the constitution will be and you think they by, will agree by no matter how people. how um, how much friction these uh, members of the committee will have they will agree without international pressure i think we should enforce this yeah. is our rights. This is mm -hmm. our constitution. We should uh, be uh, part of the, our constitution. It's not uh, uh, theirs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, final question for all of you. Quick question. In the Balkans now, is it more? Im how uh, much of a priority is justice uh, compared with stability? Um, since we're doing this debate in Kosovo, in Kosovo, stability continues to be the key. Uh, filter and viewpoint through which the international um, missions and uh, institutions watch us through. Let's start from Serbia. Is justice, do you see justice being and dealing with the past, the field you work in, as a priority for international community and EU integration? Well, uh, rule of law is priority, whatever mm -hmm. that means in mm -hmm. Serbia's context. Mm -hmm. um, it is the priority because we are opening a session, talks with the EU, mm -hmm. so chapters uh, 23 and 24 are basically rule of law. So everybody are putting hopes to that. But what we uh, have in Serbia is actually the opposite. Uh, the reform of the judicial system is very slow. Mm -hmm. Uh, there is no progress or the progress is very limited uh, when it comes to war crime trials uh, the last one the last year and uh, mm -hmm. this year are the years when we had uh, the smallest number of indictments uh, basically we now have no trials we have them on paper but uh, they're not ongoing they're in some legal limbo when it comes to 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 the past so uh, I think that at this point we are still tricking the international community that, that okay. we are dealing uh, with this issue. When they will realize that we are doing that, I don't know. That depends mm -hmm. on them. But I hope that they will, uh, they will actually push the government to do more. What are these top, top challenges of Macedonia in, in this field? Uh, justice, yes. Uh, there is a, there is also the challenge, but the, our most most expressed challenge, most suggested ch challenge for the for the now from the EU is the uh, solution of the name dispute. Name. Yeah. Any any light in the end of that tunnel that you see from your analysis? Uh, there was some some idea yesterday mm -hmm. here in the, in the media that the. the in uh, Euro Atlantic uh, Council of uh, US will initiate some kind of conference in Washington before the, the, the Wales uh, summit of NATO. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it could be a positive trigger for entrance of Macedonia so again, and Montenegro. Americans coming from Montenegro. outside to yes. impose a name. Not like uh, Yemen, they, they yes. come up with their own name. Yes, Macedonia, Macedonia <laughs> Needs uh, the big brother. loves Americans because they're pragmatic. They know what they want. Yeah. Okay. Uh, in EU, we, we found many uh, different interests among countries. So, so if, if America comes up with some name, Macedonians will love it. Uh, probably. The big brother uh, <laughs> is always right. Uh, 
Probably, I think yes. <laughs> yes, uh, okay. Yes, yes. And from Montenegro, what will be the key issue to watch in reform? Uh, stability or justice? Which one? Of course, I just would like to very shortly mention that Montenegro is a very nice and shining uh, example <laughs> of the inter-ethnic uh, relations. But what is the common and we, values? And we can find our car there, as they yeah. say in, <laughs> what is in the Western What is common for all nationalities? Uh, Montenegro, yes. Serbians, Albanians, Croatians, Romans, Egyptians, they are suffering by the lack of uh, rule of law and mm -hmm. the high level of the corruption. It mm -hmm. is the same for us, for, for all of us there. Mm -hmm. Education, social care, health care, doesn't matter. But uh, what does mean security, what does mean stability, and uh, what does mean justice? I mean, at once, our countries in the region starting to be in mm -hmm. EU, uh, EU members, we have to pass through the, a lot of reforms that the membership to EU as well as to NATO is not the goal, is not objective, is not the end of the road. Mm -hmm. This is the way how to improve our mechanism and tools, how to fight for the better quality of life, how to fight for our voice, for democracy. And it is a good uh, example for the presence of international community. At once, all of us, we have a, a job, employment, a good social care, pension and whatever. We will stop to think about multi-ethnic uh, conflicts and so on. We will be uh, the stable region and we will be in the peace. That's uh, trying to answer on your questions. Justice, justice and justice. Let's see. Arrests, arrests and arrests, yeah. I hope, <laughs> next year or so for you in Montenegro. For the last three types of people, Jo, cilat janë sfidat e Kosovës, se në qëtë emision folim shumë për sfidat Kosovës, po bashkë si njeri i misione e ndërkomtare, për fond po du me ndigju tri senet mira, që për cilave um, kemi përfitu për misione e ndërkomtare, du të mi majnë men, edhe tri senet këqia që është mirë. Edhe kolek ton dikun tjetër në botë që po kalojnë në këtë fazë, a mos me i marë për njëve. Uh. Veç, ndoshtë edhe njerë me, me rikëthy, po shumë shkurt, në, në diskutim, ose me, me, me përmenda edhe njerë, si Avlen, pa tjetër, është lufta e përgjakshme prej, prej cilës ka dojnë Kosova. Në ton, kalon, kalon pasoja, ka pas pasoja, te për në doja. Natyrisht që gjithë gjo është do është më fillu prej spari, jo vetëm me u riparu, po më, me, me u punu, me u ndërtu prej fillimit. Në um, këtë kuptim, mm -hmm. uh, unë besoj që uh, hartimi politikave, uh, tu fillu prej kushtet hutës e ligjeve, politikave tjera që kanë bojnë mm -hmm. me sigurin, kanë qenë pozitive. Mm -hmm. um, Edhe pëse uh, kemi një him kurse tu që sot përdojmë me ndru, a kini? Përdojmë me ndru, gjithë dhe ditë përdojmë me ndru. Po, kam di gju, natyrisht, natyrisht, do të vijë edhe atje. Reformat, për shamun, sektorën e siguris, reformat në, në ekonomi, në gjyqësi, edhe ato, nuk po thejmë që kanë qenë shumë të mira, po ato kanë pas efektin e vetë dhe redikun. Uh -huh. Edhe um, tjetra ka qenë, um, do shta një, një sensibilizim maj madhë i, i respektimit të drejtave të njerjut. Uh -huh do tot sensibilizim në, në kuptimin e asaj që mm -hmm. një diçka që është për jetun të kalumen edhe nuk ka funksionu, dunimi i drejtave të njerë, ju te mm -hmm. marginalizimi, diskriminimin, formave mm -hmm. të ndryshme, vrasjet, burgosjet, mm -hmm. të mos ndodhë në ditët e sotme, naturisht përvojat. Mm -hmm. Na kemi pas përvojit në të një kalume tjidhur, ku njerëzit nuk kanë qenë barabart, kanë qenë diskriminun, kanë qenë të... të të izolum, nërko që përvojat prej vendeve tjera, vendeve evropiane e më tutje, besoj kanë qenë të mirë se ardhura dhe pozitive, dhe vazhdojmë, edhe kemi nevoj për përvoja, për përvoja, në darje të këtyre përvojave, përvojave matë mira, praktikave. A ka alat mira? Nuk ka, këto janë të mira, mirë. besoj mundet me pas edhe ma shumë. Saj përket të këqijave, unë besoj, janë, po këto që është je, është kopimi, Mm -hmm. Kopimi një ligji vetëm pse e, ka, ka qeni mirë në Sloveni, për shemë mm -hmm. është kopiu edhe është cilë pa u marë parasy shumë konteksti, mm -hmm. edhe pa u marë parasy shë kaluara e, e, e vendit. Sindromi, po qu, po, sot po e quin sindromi copy-paste, po e quin këte, vazhdo? E njejta ka ndodhë për shemë edhe me kushtetutën, edhe me simbolet, edhe me himnin e gjitha këto, e, 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 një tjetër që ka qenë në mangësi të për më dhe vazhdo në tjetë, mm -hmm. fatkeqisht, është dhe mungesa një procesi, një procesi konsultut, një procesi gjithë për fshirës edhe pjesë marës. Mm -hmm. E nuk në nënkoptohet shumica, po në nënkoptohet qytetarin për gjithësi, shëqria. E, mekanizmat se si ndërtohen për një pjesë marje, për një konsultim, është diska tjetër, për nuk ka pas, mm -hmm. nuk ka egzistu. Për atë edhe nuk, nuk, 
jo kushtetuat është e mirë, simbolet janë të mira, himi është i mirë, në base, po jo për gjithë. Ga dalime edhe në mes shumicës, edhe në mes të pakicave tjera. Kjo ishte para, mungesa e logaridhonjes, naturisht që ka qenë edhe vazhdon të mendet një problematike madhe, edhe sot, edhe sot ka një, mos tem, pa qartësi, të madhe se kush është përgjec, kush jep logari i qytetarëve të Kosovës, japin gjykatat, japin institucionet, apo është një superfuqi, është një partneritet me ndërkomtarë që përsaktojnë gjithdo gjo edhe nuk i apin logari i askujt, edhe mungesa strategjive dalëse. Misionet në ndërkomtarë du të kenë një strategji dalëse qështë fillim, prandaj edhe për kraja që je për gjithdo vendi, jo vetëm kontekstin tonë, po edhe në kontekst e tjera, du të jetë... Shumir, ma qitë e një pyqit fundit, i kom edhe 5 minutat fundit, cilët po du me shuzu që ka the strategia dalëse për misionin ndërkomtare. In fact, Maria, what we get today is not an ending of missions in Kosovo, we get yet another mission recently. The Kosovo Parliament approve a new court that is being named tribunal for war crimes. I'm interested for your te technocratic point of view, that, that the ones you've been following, the Hague uh, trials, you've been following war crimes trials in Serbia. Um, tell me, uh, especially, this is a particular prosecutor, American prosecutor, Clint Williamson, that you've followed in the Hague. Um, what, what is the Hague experience can tell us about this new tribunal? Um, how should we look at it? Because there's a lot of debate in Kosovo, but not, not the ones that looks at what has this prosecutor done and achieved in other trials of former Yugoslavia. Uh, well, he was not the leading prosecutor. He mm -hmm. was in charge mainly for the investigation, for the Milosevic case uh, for Kosovo, and for Vukovar cases in Croatia, and Arkan cases. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, uh, he got only one conviction in for Vukovar, uh, and uh, for Milosevic, we know he died as well uh, as Arkan. Uh, I just fear at this point uh, that this tribunal is putting a lot of hopes for victims, as the ICTY did at the beginning. So everyone, everyone put their belief that this will lead to justice, which, as we see when the ICTY is now closing, didn't lead. So I guess at this point, uh, I'm very cautious to say that this will lead to a conviction, which is the most important thing. Uh, mm. On the basis of the experience of the international tribunals, this is extremely hard job. Uh, mm -hmm. Williamson has a good CV in terms of prosecution. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have a good CV in convictions, but we mm -hmm. can say it's not only his fault. Mm -hmm. But let's hope that mm -hmm. this will change. But I, I just think at this point that what it are is the too tricky things in, in the tribunal that didn't work? Uh, the tricky, basically, judicial things. I know what you say about emotions yeah. and hopes of the people, but why didn't it work? Why didn't convictions work, if you can say in, in broad terms from what you followed the trials? Uh, in ICTY had a big problem uh, because they changed strategy several times. Uh, what they did with Milosevic is they charged him for a ton of things and basically the guy didn't live enough uh, to sentence him for all of that. Uh, mm -hmm. Initial strategy was to sentence him just for Kosovo, but then there were voices in the international community that his indictment should be changed. But what I see the problem here in, in this mm -hmm. tribunal uh, and uh, what the ICTY had are documents, military documents proving orders and other things. Uh, in these trials, as far as I know, and I'm 99% mm -hmm. sure there are no documents of KLA who would potentially prove something. Mm -hmm. That means that the prosecution is much relying on witnesses mm -hmm. and uh, that whether the judges will accept that, that really depends on the judges. There are some judges who think the witnesses are not reliable enough, mm -hmm. they ask more, so really, this is, I think, uh, the toughest job, and that is why I think he needed so much time. And yet we still don't know whether this will result in the indictment. We know that uh, the court will be established when, if the investigation, when the investigation is over and the indictments, we still don't know whether they will be raised. I mean, there are speculations, but there are no confirmation that actually 
uh, there will be an indictment against someone. This is just a preparatory phase. Thank you for a very cold-blooded, uh, cold-blooded analysis in a very hot-blooded in Kosovo topic right now. Thanks to everybody that you've come all the way to Kosovo to share your experiences with us. Thanks to the re people who come from closer, Macedonia and uh, uh, Macedonia, Serbia and Montenegro, and Yemen and India. And Bangladesh, sorry, it's a big mistake. I know, uh, I apologize. Um, Kjo ishte krej që a kemi për ju sonte, e tash deri tajtën e anshme ju lo me uh, website-in ton, kalzo.com, në cilin presim raportime të krejt padrecive prej jush, të cilat ne do të vazhdojmë të hulumtojmë. Deri javën e anshme, natën e mirë.